Although it may seem like a daunting task to read every single comment that you guys leave me in my videos, I do because I want to know what you want to see, which is why today we're taking apart one of the most commonly requested domestic V6s ever on my channel. And I've never done one, a 3.6 liter Pentastar. I know, I know, a lot of you guys have been asking for this. And it's not that I couldn't have found one. And actually, if you pay attention to some of my earlier teardowns, you might have seen a Pentastar on the shelf, which is still there. That engine has low miles and it has a problem that I can fix. I think it's got a valve or valve seat issue. So hoping I have parts here to fix that engine, plus a good engine to tear down. Now this engine came out, I think in 2011, they came out in town and countries and caravans. They also put them in chargers and in 300s, challengers. They're in Jeeps like Grand Cherokees, Wranglers. They're in Ram trucks. They're in all kinds of stuff. This is a very widely used engine. And I know there's some problems with the early engines with some he cylinder head issues, cam issues, but I generally don't have a bad opinion of these engines. I've driven several of these vehicles and they run pretty strong, they're very smooth, and they are very fuel efficient for what they are. There is something to consider when talking about how reliable an engine is. Sure, I've seen a lot of bad 3.6 Pentastars, but that doesn't mean that they're inherently bad engines. They made a ton of these engines, so of course I'd see a lot of them. 3% of 2,000 engines is a much smaller number than 3% of 200,000. That being said, the early ones, Heard some issues. This is actually an early engine. It's out of a 2014 town and country, and it doesn't turn over all the way. I'll show you that in a second. It also has heat tabs on it, which tells me it's either been sold and returned, or I don't know. I don't know what's wrong here, but this engine has a sketchy past, and we're going to rip it all apart. I'll show you what I mean. Now let's go backwards, which you're not supposed to do. Doesn't feel good. And then it gets to that tight spot again. Now I will say this too. St. Louis had a ton of rain the other day, a few weeks ago, and we've seen a lot of hydro-locked engines. So I'm not trying to call it before we touch it, but there's a reason it doesn't turn over all the way. Now in most situations we'd start by pulling the plugs out, but we need to pull the intake manifold off first to have access. Next we'll remove the coils. Ah! Oh. Well, let's get to the other side. We'll get you. That was a lot of water. Well, this thing sat outside, so. It's clear this engine sat outside because the amount of rust and moisture on this bank. Uh, I don't think that was inside the combustion chamber. I think that was strictly in the plug wells. That could have been why the coils were as difficult to get off as they were. But there's a set of Autolite plugs here. They don't look terrible. They're not my favorite plug, but no bent straps, no damaged electrodes, no signs of malice in the combustion palace yet. Next, we're gonna remove the lower intake manifold with the fuel rails and injectors. Well, there's lots of uh, lots of junk in here. I'm not talking about the stuff Chrysler put here. I'm talking about other stuff. Uh, it looks like there's an oil cooler, oil filter housing. I heard that these never go bad, ever. No one's ever had to replace this. I'm, no, that's not, nope. Let's take a moment and blow all this junk out of here. Well, there's no major issues that I can see so far. Bit of carbon buildup, but not awful. 
Yeah, I don't see anything terribly awry yet. Next, we're going to move the right or rear valve cover. Old blue. I guess this is it, huh? Why is that not it? Am I just blind? Did I miss a bolt? Okay, it has to do with this. Whatever this is, crankcase ventilation. All right, let's see if this is it. Yep, yep, that's it. Now oh, this will probably just come right off. Oh, I gotta move this bracket. There we are. Let go. Ow! So this actually looks pretty clean in here, but this is a little worrisome. There's a little spot of rust on that cam lobe. I don't see, it's, it's super clean in here. I mean, there's no signs of metal. It was clearly maintained. There's not hardly any oil varnish. This looks nice. Let's get to the other side. Before we get this off, I have to remove the div stick. Oh, please just come right off. Oh, okay, we're just... Come on. I... Just... Okay, we're just gonna... It, it wins for right now. We're gonna leave that there so we can get this valve cover off. Oh yeah, this thing again. Same deal on this side. This thing looks really good. It's really clean. I don't see anything in the wrong spot or missing. There's no metal. No, it looks good. Now we're gonna strip some stuff off the front of this engine so we can get to the timing cover. I think everything else is tens and it looks like I'm gonna have to drop the lower oil pan to get uh, the bolts that hold this upper pan to the timing cover. Let's get that crank pulley off there first. Oh, it's gonna be like that. Okay. Don't make me get the loader. All right, we're gonna try a breaker bar. Yeah, that was tight. That was really tight. Right off. Now, I don't know if I need a puller to get this off. It would appear that I don't know. It would definitely appear that I don't know. Let's, uh, let's give it a little pry action. Yeah, I think I can get it off this way. All right, now a whole bunch of 10 millimeters Thermostat, crash. What? Let go. Oh, it helps when you get all the bolts out. Well, if that doesn't look like uh, now time for the water pump. pump looks pretty good. I don't see anything weird in the coolant. Yeah, it's perfect. Now a few more 10 millimeters. I think I can get this one here. That is not a 10. 
Lower oil pan. Lower pan. What do you think? I should, should I drain this first? I think I should drain this first. Yeah. We're not going to be able to get that out. I have extractors for this purpose, but we're just going to drop the pan and hope it's drained. It sounds drained. drained. Well the pan looks pretty good. Oil doesn't look too bad. I don't see any major deposits or there's no debris in here. So that's good so far. Now I've got a few 13 millimeters that hold the timing cover to the upper oil pan. Okay now this Timing cover should come right off, right? Well, I didn't really want to do it this way, but do what you got to do. Okay, oh, look how clean that is in there. It is not often that we pull an engine apart that's this clean. This is nice. Well, everything inside the timing cover looks pretty tidy. It really does. Everything's clean and nice. I don't see any broken guys, and there's no signs that anything's coming apart. Time to take this timing system apart. Let's get these tensioners out the safe way. Perfect. Now we can finish taking the rest of this timing system out. That rail is absolutely perfect. That one doesn't want to come out yet. This one will. hardly any wear. I think this was a low mileage engine. These are absolutely perfect. Okay, we've got one more bank left. Chains. This will come right off, I'm sure. It's not under too much tension. I don't, what the, I don't, I come, what, I don't understand, what is happening? How are you supposed to do this? I don't think force is the answer, but it might be the solution. Let's give this a go. We're going to do this the safest way possible. We're just going to look. We're going to go over here and use the engine as a shield. Oh, no. It's, uh... Not too bad. Okay, I've pulled a significant number of bolts out, and yet I am still in the same position here. Is it? Is this what needs to? Maybe I gotta take the oil pump chain off. Nope. I can't imagine having to take all of this apart just to put upper chains on it. But the hell do I know? Just the guy zipping bolts out till parts fall off. Oh, we are so close. Yes. Yeah, it's like brand new. Finally. It's a nice chain. Now we're going to start to crack the cam caps loose. Yay, I did it.
Okay, so these are kind of in a bind. I wish I made sure I did this a little differently on the other side. There we go. As I expected, I don't see any major wear in the cam journals or on the rockers. Everything is in pretty good shape in here. Same with the cams, which is kind of surprising for a Chrysler product, but maybe these don't have that issue. Okay, now we're going to break these head bolts loose, but this dipstick, this Come on. <sighs> Sorry. I I had to. Oh, these are tight. Okay, this head should just come right off. I just hope it doesn't turn me into Miles Davis here. Well, that is a lot of carbon. Look at that. I bet you that was what was keeping it from, from uh, turning all the way over. That's a ton. That big piece right there. How does that happen? So much in every cylinder. Now the boards look really nice. The head also shows lots and lots of carbon. Lots of carbon. Look at that. Shiny metal on that last cylinder. But I don't think that's from an impact. I don't see any valve damage. It's odd that that valve looks that way and the rest of them don't though. Now right, we're going to try to turn the cams into a more neutral position or make sure they're in a neutral position and it actually looks like this side is so that way when I pull the cam caps off the cams won't go into a bind. Very same story on this cylinder head. Everything looks beautiful. Same with these cams as well. Okay. That was too easy. Perfect. So, same deal over here. So much carbon. It's actually like a ridge here at the top of the piston. Where did all of this come from? Oh, there's a little bit of water and moisture in here. Probably from it sitting outside. Man, I've never seen this much carbon. It had large hunks of it. I'll wipe all this off. Gave it a little brake clean bath so I could actually see what it's what it's like here. So this is after I cleaned it up. You can still see there's quite a bit of carbon on the top of these pistons. The bores look pretty good. I don't see anything too terrible. And the cylinder head looks good too. I don't see any issues that are jumping out at me, but look at the carbon here. There's just like a, a ledge here of carbon. All right, now we're gonna turn this thing over since there's no cylinder heads on it. See if it goes all the way around. Oh yeah. 
I bet that this thing was carbon locked. A little bit of a ridge at the top. It's not awful. Let's look to see, make sure everything goes to top dead center. Yep, I don't think anything's bent. I think this was a good motor, but it somehow built up a bunch of carbon that kept it from spinning all the way over. Now we're gonna remove the oil filter housing and the oil cooler. Personally, I don't like seeing this out of plastic. I'd much rather this be made out of aluminum. All right, got a couple knock sensors to disconnect. Now we're gonna turn this over. We should probably get a pan to catch all of the stuff that falls out of it. We're gonna turn this thing over. It's gonna make a mess. Well, the screen looks good. It's not full of debris. Now we're gonna remove all the 13 millimeter bolts that hold this upper oil pan on. See, Chrysler gives you a place to pry. And next, I need to pull this harness through for the oil pump. I think that goes through, right? Yep, just a little tap. Now we're going to pull the oil pump off. Okay, well, that was all pretty simple. Next, the windage tray. Aha, uh -huh, those are tight. What the? These are two of the bolts for the main caps. The inside of this engine looks really nice. It's a real shame it ended up here like this. But there still could be some damage from trying to compress that carbon, which is why we need to pull the rest of this apart. We're going to turn this thing over so we can start at the front of the engine. It's always cleaner to go front to back. And then there were two. I can't get that one out. I think we're going to leave that one in there until we get the crank out. I think that one's stuck in that top ridge of carbon. Okay, now we're going to pull the crank out. Just got some main cap bolts and she's out. I had to get the uh, engine stand bolt out of the way. It was blocking this main cap bolt. Wow. So these are tight too. Where's that breaker bar? We're just going to crack these bolts loose. I know you guys like this anyway. This should just lift right out. 
Except for that chain. Almost got me. All right, the final two pistons. These were getting kind of stuck at the top of the bore and I didn't want to tear anything up. So this carbon ridge along the top is keeping the piston, the rings from clearing the uh, top of the bore. It's the same thing here, it's much worse. So we're gonna try to clean this up so that these will slide right out. Same thing in the cylinder here. That does not want to come out still. Let's give it some help. There we go. Well, that was the lesser of the two. Okay, it seems to be stuck in that position. And it is really stuck there. Ah, yes. Well, the thing I was most concerned about is okay, is that's the rod bearings. Because anytime you try to compress something that won't be compressed like fluid or perhaps carbon, you can distort the rod bearings. And that is one thing I had to check. And these bearings, while they do have some wear, they still look pretty good. The rods and pistons look pretty good too, but I will say there's a lot of carbon jammed up in the ring lands. Most of the rings are free, but I bet it would use some oil because the, the oil control rings are very stuck in there in most of these. And as you get towards the back, these are the two that really fought us coming out. And then uh, I don't remember which one it was. One of these was the one that kept it from turning over. Or maybe it was a couple. I think it was a couple of these. Yeah, look at the amount of carbon on the piston. How does that even happen? The crankshaft looks really good. Definitely a reusable component. I don't see any signs of damage whatsoever. Judging by how clean the inside of this block is, I bet it didn't have very many miles on it. I'm pretty sure I can put this puzzle back together. So this was an engine from a wrecked vehicle, probably had low miles on it, and it sat for some time after it was wrecked, and then once the engine was pulled from it, it probably sat even longer, and either the yard or the customer got it and realized it wouldn't turn all the way over. I don't think it was installed into a vehicle because you couldn't get all the torque converter bolts in it. And when they realized it wouldn't turn all the way over, they probably tried a few things and then threw it in the core area, and that's when I bought it. So I'm. Yes, I tore down a good engine, but I didn't know it was good. And any time that you try to turn an engine over and there's some sort of resistance, you risk damaging internal components like rod bearings. And I was not born a gambling man, so I'm not going to sell somebody an engine that I am not 100% confident is a good engine. I don't like wasting people's time, so it came apart. Could I put it back together? Yeah. Are these engines worth it? I don't think so. They're, they're about $1,000 to $1,200 engines. and. I'd probably have a few hundred dollars in labor and in parts, which would seem reasonable until you consider the value of the parts after I sell them. I think it'll be a wash either way, so it'll be easier to sell the parts and a lot less liability. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy parts off of this engine or any of the other engines I've torn down or off of this wrecked slingshot, I'm gonna leave our email and our website in the video description. If there's something on our website that you don't see that you do need, you can send us an email requesting that. There's a whole form on there. Just let us know what you're looking for. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.